We got Master Blaster in the house. Let me tell you, I love Blaster. He's a pretty cool Transformers character. But the thing is, this has been my only Blaster for nearly a decade. I wasn't really into the Titans Return one. I just got that molded sound wave and I was just like, leader class for a Blaster? That's kind of a little too big. It's too big for Soundwave, too, but I have a whole shelf full of Soundwave. I don't really care. <laughs> but the thing is, with Blaster, I'm like, I need a good Voyager-sized Blaster that just fits in with my Classics collection. And for nearly a decade, uh, the Fall of Cybertron Voyager class was my best option. But, finally, with Transformers Kingdom slash Legacy, depending on which, you know, version of the figure you get, we finally have a nice G1 actual character faithful Blaster. And let me tell you, it's a good one. But sometimes with these old versus news, I'm kind of like, well, pro I might get rid of the old one. I don't really need it anymore. But man, I don't think I'm going to in this case. Uh, I think I think this guy, he'll stand proud and tall next to my uh, other uh, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron boys. Because, man, it's I didn't really go in on Siege. I was kind of like, I don't really need these very g one -y characters in Cybertronian modes, because I already have Cybertronian kind of guys with the Fall of Cybertron stuff. You know, they don't look different enough to me <laughs> to warrant having two. So, in this case, yeah, I mean, to me, this is a very clear, like, this is Cybertronian Blaster. This is, you know, G1 Earth Mode Boombox Blaster. So yeah, really cool toys. Number one, you can see there is a size difference. But when it comes to the weight, there's not really much of a difference at all. Uh, because these Fall of Cybertron toys, yes, it's definitely larger. Um, but as you can see, it's uh, it's kind of hollow. Uh, it's not super duper hollow. It's not like you can totally see through him. But man, you can just tell, like, look at his arm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty hollow. The inside of his arm there, um, his feet, his legs are pretty much hollow. I can tell the plastic's just not as up to par as it is nowadays, <clears throat> I can just kind of tell. You can see a little bit of that flex there. I mean, it's still good plastic. It doesn't feel like a knockoff or anything. But the plastic they use nowadays is just top tier. This is just top notch stuff. I'm thoroughly impressed with this blaster. But you can see he still has some hollowness. I mean, his hands, actually his arms do some crazy stuff that totally warrant that empty spot right there. Uh, <laughs> but he does have some empty thighs. It's not the end of the world, man. Transformers have been hollow since the beginning. People are like, oh, man, G1 toys with, you know, all their die cast, blah, blah, blah. Look at those things, man. Is that really quality to you, <laughs> Duke? Man, Transformers have been hollow since the beginning. That's not something I care about. But it's something I like pointing out when it comes to, like, the weight and the density and, like, the quality of the plastic. Because I can tell this definitely feels better. Then again... This retailed for 20 bucks. This is $33.99. Can't even just be 30 bucks anymore. We have to add an extra four to it. So let's uh I mean you can see, you can see there's definitely some pretty stark differences with how they look. But let's take a closer look at the Fall Cybertron blaster. Because man, I've always been a huge fan of this head sculpt. <clears throat> I just I really like the personality in it. There's not a lot of Transformers nowadays that really have personality in their head sculpts. So it's really nice to see it here. Uh, especially with Blaster. He's a very uh, energetic um, and very uh, <laughs> very extroverted Transformers character. So I think having, having an expression like that's really fitting. Um, I think the, the head sculpt is very, very nice. I kind of like the goggled look. It's almost like those goggles would flip down and almost give him a more uh, vintage G1 look in a way, like for the toy. Uh, I like the chest. They did remold the chest from Soundwave, because this is actually a retool of Fall of Cybertron Voyager Soundwave. Um, and I think it works really well for Blaster. <laughs> I genuinely do. It has a new chest and head from Soundwave. Everything else is very clearly Soundwave. It even has the hole where Soundwave's uh, shoulder cannon would go. Uh, it does have a new gun as well. It does have specifically Blaster's Blaster. And uh, it's very clearly Blasters. It looks really good. Let's just compare it real quick to the Kingdom version. You can see, yeah, it's got the hole in there. It's got the scope. It's got the stock. That's actually really cool. Because I always feel like, uh, I've always felt like Blaster has one of the most iconic Blasters <laughs> out of Transformers. So that's a really cool little detail there. I do like the color scheme. It's very G1, <clears throat> but I do feel like it kind of starts falling apart uh below the waist it's just kind of a, a city of like this 
tannish gray. It's just all it is. It doesn't really have anything to break up the color, except a little bit of black right there. Even the feet, you know, the feet could have been black or something, but it's all this very dull, like tannish gray. <clears throat> Not the biggest fan. I wish it was maybe broken up just a little bit here and there, maybe even more of a bluish gray like it is here on a uh, on the new one. But still, it's not something that makes me think, oh, this figure is absolute garbage, because it's not. It's actually really cool. It does have a cool gimmick to it that I've always enjoyed. So, uh, you can press the button. Actually, he has a little finger sculpted to press it, and I think they articulated him enough so he can do it himself. Yep, there we go. Open up his chest, and he's got a data disc. Ooh, and you push on the plunger on his back, and it's supposed to pull it out. But the problem is the data disk that's in there. We'll talk about if I can get it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no. Because see, like, you can put multiples in there and have this all the way back. I think you can fit two or three total. I'm inclined to say just two. But, oh my god, is it stuck? Is he stuck? So, he comes with steel jaw, right? Oh my gosh, it's like he's stuck. Oh no, did I stick it even more? Oh, I stuck it even more. So Steel Jaw is a very complex mold of Data Disk. Ooh, I got it partially. God, I don't want to break it. Oh, almost. Oh, there we go. Oh my god. Very complex mold. He has a lot of little things sticking off of him like his feet and his legs and things, makes it very difficult. But on the other hand, one like this guy here, Rewind, um, he was actually just in his chest in storage. This one is uh, a lot easier to manage, uh, has less going on. Um, I say is he's still kind of getting caught, but yeah, that was way easier. So yeah, that's a neat little feature, but as you can see, Steel Jaw, his little buddy, kind of has some problems. So these did have an auto-morph to them, too, where, like, they would land on the floor and they would pop open because there's a little button on the bottom. And he, uh, he, he mostly did. Just finish the legs, flip them, then flip his back and flip his tail out. And you're left with a uh, pretty awkward, pretty gangly steel jaw that likes to do whatever that is. <laughs> Not a very good uh, cassette of sorts. Um, they also use this mold for Ravage. Absolute garbage. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping we get a new Steel Jaw. Because this is the only Steel Jaw in my collection, man. And it's it's not very good. It's, I mean, the head sculpt's not bad. But yeah, it's that's not very good. It's not. I would have to give that a hard pass. But, let's go over his articulation. He's got a swivel at the head, a uh, hinge and swivel at the shoulders, swivel at the bicep. Um, he also has this outward hinge, for whatever reason. He doesn't really need it, but he has it. Um, elbow, which is very clicky, for some reason. Very clicky. Up and down at the wrist, swivel at the wrist. Nothing at the waist, um, but he does have very nice universal hips. Thigh swivel, very nice clicky knee bend. I've always loved the knees on this mold. And he has up and down at the ankle. So, articulation-wise, it's pretty good. It's definitely a nice blaster. It's one I'd recommend if you're a fan of the Cybertron games. Uh, I don't believe he even appeared in the games. But still, it's a blaster to have in that collection. You know, he, he fits in with them. It's pretty good. I like it. So, let's, uh, let's uh, go over the robot mode for the new one. Because, let me tell you, um, it's pretty darn near perfect. So, I did mention the character fullness of the head sculpt of the, of the other one. This one is a pretty blank expression. It's still a very nice sculpt, but it's very blank. He doesn't really have anything going on. It's just blaster. <laughs> it's not really anything special. Um, but I really do like the, uh, all the little detailing they have in the mold. I really do like that. The chest looks really good. I really do like that. This is an all-new figure, by the way. Um, very solid feeling. Very, very solid. Uh, I love the legs, especially how they transform. But yeah, he's got some really cool legs. All the little details for the boom box. 
Dude, this figure is really nice. <laughs> I'm just going to say it right now. I already showed you the gun, but the gun's also really cool. Definitely dig that. It does have a trigger finger on his right hand, but you could also use that as a button press. Let's say we can have him hold the gun in his left hand because uh, you can have him press his own button because he has a bit of a wrist hinge inward. It's a little harder on this one, but I'm pretty sure he can get there. Come on. Maybe the arm will kind of block the motion of it going out. Yeah, there we go. You can have him press his own button. And with this figure, his minion is Eject. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. He is made all out of clear blue plastic. <sighs> Yikes. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't break. Uh, I'm hoping we get Rewind, though, um, especially since, uh, in, especially in the IDW comics, he's a very uh, prominent character in that, like, he's his own character. Uh, I just, I feel like, man, they didn't give us an eject out of the Titans Return uh, cassette mold. I've still been waiting for a proper version of this pair, because uh, there is the Fall of Cybertron version, but it's not really that good. But I do have to say, though, this figure is not bad. It's hard to get that head out. It's very nice to have my fingernail, but even that. There we go. So yeah, um, get him in his old robot mode. And excuse the focus, because he is a little blear, a little blear, a little clear blue plastic guy. So he's blear. Um, I don't even know if that's a word. There, that's if blear is a word. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's really cute looking. I love that little head sculpt. Uh, I really wish he was not translucent blue, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. He's got really nice articulation, though, for his size. He's got swivels and hinges at the shoulders, ball joints at the uh, elbows, um, swivels and hinges at the hips, ball joints at the knees, um, and a ball joint at the head that gets you up and down, and a little bit of tilt, uh, but definitely side to side. See, so, yeah, I can get a lot of little motion out of him. And he has holes on the side of his arms, too, so he's compatible with weapons. He can seriously... Let's see if we can give him Blaster's weapon. Yeah. <laughs> we can we can give him Blaster's gun. It's just kind of mounted to the side of his arm, but you can actually arm him up if you want. Man, this is a really cool little figure. Uh, I really do like it. I'm just... I'm worried about the clear, because, uh, I mean, clear plastic definitely does not have a positive reputation. I'm kind of worried, like, I don't know if it's already stressing at the knee there or what. But it doesn't look that good. <laughs> I'm a little worried. But yeah, there's there's a little eject. He's pretty awesome. I really like him. So let's go over the articulation of this new blaster. Because it's pretty slick. It's pretty slick. Got a ball joint at the head. Gives you a little wiggle waggle and side to side. Universal shoulders. Bicep swivel. Nice knee bend, in and out at the wrist there. Uh, looks a little awkward if you go out, but in is pretty natural. Does have a nice uh, waist rotation. Hips, fairly, you know, unhindered, universal. Thigh swivel, very nice tight knee bend, very tight. Actually, it bends forward a little bit too, which is funny. And his ankles, man, ooh, his ankles. Nothing, uh, nothing down, but you do get a little bit up. But I love when they do this with the ankle joint. Um, you can see they actually have a cutout in the foot where there's this solid piece that actually still makes the ankle look full and complete while you uh, do the ankle tilt. So that is very, very cool. Really like that. So uh, with the robot mode of the new one out of the way, let's transform the old one. It's been so long. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> we'll see. Um, so yeah, man, it's, man, it's crazy how long it's been since this mold came out. Ten years, right? Nearly ten years. Uh, <laughs> since all the Fall of Cybertron stuff, because, I mean, it's 2022 now. Um, I, I think that's about right. This guy could have come out a little later, though. He could have been, like, 2013-ish. Uh, I'll definitely have to double check that but I'm pretty sure I still remember how to do it this version of the mold is very similar to the uh, war for Cybertron deluxe and I have played with that toy to hell and back so it's not that difficult for me pretty sure I remember this I actually have this mold three times I bought all three versions of it 
So I have Blaster, Soundwave, and uh, Sound Blaster. I mean, it's a cool mold. I really do enjoy it. Ooh. That... Oh, I forgot it's a slider. I forgot he's got a sliding hinge. It's wild. It's like that slides. And then it hinges. I mean, you don't really see sliders in Transformers nowadays. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And you have that all the way out like that. Then his legs are like the most basic transformation of all time. They just kind of fold up and do their own thing. Just got to get that part right. Oop. I say it's basic, but I'm totally fumbling it. Okay, I think, yeah, that kind of tabs right there. Oh, wow, I feel like, I feel like I'm missing something. Like, shouldn't that be more connected to the, uh, to the thingy there? Oh, maybe, like, it bends a little bit more. Yeah, that's what it is. You just get a little bit more bend out of it. Right? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I got it. We got there. We got there in the end. Man, I can definitely attest to the feeling of the plastic. It's definitely not as good as they feel nowadays. It's kind of funny, when I started getting into Transformers around this time, you know, 2012, uh, 2013, it's when the plastic and the quality was probably at its lowest of the entire franchise. Um, I mean, the engineering wasn't too bad, but the quality was not that good. Then I think you can also, like, hinge this piece, right? Isn't this piece on its own hinge? Or am I mistaken? No, it is. It's on its own hinge. For whatever reason. For whatever reason, that piece is, like, separate. See, I can kind of have that. Alright, so there's Blaster in his, uh, in his Cybertronian armor truck mode with a weird little seat on top. Now, granted, yes, the seat is because you can actually use the gimmick in this mode too. Like the button is still exposed, so you can actually still have them deploy minions in vehicle mode, which is super awesome. Super cool they retain the gimmick. But yeah, you know, cute little Cybertronian armored car. Uh, doesn't roll that well. You can see how the wheels are sort of struggling. They don't all want to turn. Because, man, these wheels are so cheap. Oh, they did change the wheels as well. Uh, from Soundwave. They've got little Autobot logos on them now. That's really cool. Didn't realize that. Yeah, that's a little difference right there. So yeah, Fall of Cybertron Blaster. Pretty solid. Pretty solid guy. Uh, but I can definitely feel that the plastic... I mean, you can hear the rattle of the wheels. Like, it's it's not what it is nowadays. Now let's go on to the new Chonkmeister. Because this guy is uh, he's pretty solid. Pretty solid figure, I gotta say. One thing I like about the arms, it's they don't transform how you'd expect. You like rotate them, and then you flip the uh, the forearm onto the bicep, and flip the hand like that. And you'd think, what the heck? But yeah, that's that's how it goes. Then the legs have a lot going on. Like you have all these little panels and things you flip out. For just being a boombox guy, he really does have a lot of little transformation. The feet you flip in, and I've noticed flipping the feet back out is very difficult. Like, I, I've definitely struggled. Um, I guess you can actually, yeah, there you go. You can just use the ankle tilt and you get it. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I've, I've found the workaround as I complain about the issue. But the key thing is you got to get that peg in the thigh into the arm. If you don't do that, then nothing's going to want to line up. It's just going to be a mess trying to get this guy converted. And another thing too, this kind of wants to clash up in the front, so you got to be mindful of that. But I mean, once you, uh, once you kind of figure out the little clearance issues, where you have to follow a certain order of operations, it's not too difficult. There we go, got that in. Yeah, let's just drop it. I don't know when I started. Every time I drop something or, like, someone kind of walks in front of me, I make a little oop. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. I'm just like, oop. Yep, that's a, that's a little characteristic of me. But are we done? No, we got to get his handle. 
you got to be able to hold it. Really like how the handle folds out and just nicely slots in. And there we go. Very nice boom box. Actually, a little detail I missed. These things, you flip. I didn't even know you could do this right when I got the figure. You flip these. Well, you might want to do this. Uh, yeah, got this out of order. My bad. I got to untransform him a little bit. Ah, oh, geez. You got to do this before you put in the legs because the hands will get in the way inside the leg and you won't be able to do it. But yeah, basically you flip that and it gives you like a different detail, which is super cool. It's a really nice little detail. You can see right here, clearance issues. If it's not perfectly lined up with this thigh and this arm, you're going to have trouble. And it's kind of hard to see in there and see if it's lined up. Like, I think I got it. We'll see. We'll see if I got it. Pretty sure. Yep, there we go. I got it. I'm not going to worry about that one. <laughs> I'm just not going to worry about it. So yeah, there we go. Nice boom box. Really nice detail. I love all the black. Basically, totally clean backside. Super awesome boom box. I really cannot say anything bad about this. It's very, very nice. Tape deck really works well. I love the spring. You hear that? Hear that little spring? Oh, it actually sounds like an actual uh, tape deck holder so yep there we go old versus new of blaster good old blaster oh man these figures are really cool uh the fall of cybertron the fall of cybertron what did i even say the fall of cybertron one definitely shows its age because i mean it's nearly a decade old you can tell with that plastic it's uh it's not how they used to be like oh man it's, i can especially tell in vehicle mode like man they're definitely pretty comparable in weight if not this one being just ever so slightly heavier, possibly, just because it has a little bit more plastic. But man, the plastic's way more dense than this. So yeah, let me know which one you prefer. I'm sure most people are going to go with the Kingdom one, and honestly, that is 100% probably the right choice. The Kingdom Blaster is borderline perfect. Who needs to collect Masterpiece nowadays when you can get figures this nice for only, you know, normal, standard retail price? I am more than happy with Kingdom Blaster, and I don't see myself probably ever getting another Blaster ever again. I really have no reason for one. <laughs> so yeah, guys, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Special shout out to the patrons of Patreon. Thank you all so much for the continued support. And as always, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.